Hello, in this lecture, we will quickly get started with the PowerPoint. Okay, so we'll basically just create a few slides, put in some bit of text, and then we will run it, we will show it, we will display it. So to get started, we are in the PowerPoint, which is uh, relatively easy to find. Okay, you can simply type it in your search once you have your Microsoft Office installed. You can do that and you'll find the PowerPoint. Okay. And once you're in, you'll get to this home tab, to this home tab, and then you can do blank presentation. There are other options to go with. You can get a theme, choose a theme. Okay. So if I go to more themes right here, like that, I can choose a few more of them. As you can see, there are several options. Okay, and you can search them, but usually you will just need to go to the blank presentation and get started from scratch. And that is what we will do. So I'll just click that. And as you can see, it gets uh, relatively quickly set up. Now on my right, you can see I have these design ideas, design ideas. So you can basically choose a theme in another way. Okay, now I'm not going to get into that right now. We will cover more of these uh, design things in the other sections, in the other lectures. Okay, but that option does exist. So this is our first slide. Okay, in the PowerPoint you have slides. Each of these uh, pages, uh, sheets, uh, whatever you want to call them, are slides. Okay, and you present many of them. And this is the first one. This is the default one. We will get to these um, layouts as well. As you can see, you have title and you have subtitle. Okay, so let's call it a test title, for example. Test title. And then let's say test subtitle. Test subtitle. Now, you can also do headers and footers, but once again, we will get to that later. This is what you need to do to get started. You have this default page. Okay, and then you obviously need more. Now you may already see in the home tab right here in the home tab, you have new slide, you have new slide like that. So you can create a new slide from here. But you can also left click rather right click on here below your first slide or whichever slide it is, right click like that. And then you can do new slide. Okay, you can do new slide. And as you can see, in this case, I get a sort of a default one. Okay, a little title and then some bullet points. Okay, I have a little title. Again, slide one, I can call it. Slide one, test title, test title. Just like that, simply, as you can see, it's quite easy to read. It's a sort of basic default. Obviously, it doesn't look pretty at all, but it is readable. That's why they give it uh, to you by default. Okay. Now, in the middle, in the middle, you have some of these options. You can insert a table, insert a chart, insert a smart graphics, 3D models, and all that stuff. Uh, so you would click on that, and it would be just a sort of a shortcut. We will again get to these uh, things later. They do not matter now. What you have to understand is that you, you get these default placements. Okay, but you can always change that. Okay, so let's uh, say, say point one, and then point two, we might have like that. See, we have all these points. But if you don't need that, you simply select this object, and you click delete, like that, and it gets deleted. You see, it got completely deleted. I don't have it anymore. I can try to select it, highlight it, click on it. It does not exist. And you can also move them. Okay, so you see I have this movement cursor right now and I can move it. And you also get this nice little alignment line. I can put it in the middle. Okay, we will take a look at centering the text and doing some different stuff with the text in the next lecture. Okay, but for now you can see you can move the whole container. You don't have to align the text itself all the time. And another thing you can do is create a section. Okay, section. Now 
I right click on that again, I right click on that again, or I can go to the top and add a section. Okay, there was only on one option in this case, I can add a section. You see, it's an untitled section, I get this prompt to enter a section name, I would call it uh, say second section, like that. Okay, I have it. You see, there's something called easy linking, drag any section head onto the slide. Now, we won't get into that again, but basically, it's just a way to move them around quickly like that. You see, I selected it and I can put it in in front of the first section. This is the default section, okay? You always have a section. Now, in the second section, I should place some little text, okay? Some little slide rather. Now, I can do it again like that. I can do it like that, or I can go to the top this time and select from one of these uh, themes. Uh, now, in this case, this would be the layout theme, okay? This wouldn't be an actual theme. But we can do, say, comparison, okay? Comparison, this will be several containers, so you see, you have little comparison, okay? Let's call it uh, slide two, test title again. A little nice little naming system, okay? And then let's say option one and option two. Okay, let's say good and let's say bad. So you have a little comparison, right? Slide two, test title, all looks nice. Now, as you can see, as you can probably already see, there are many options in terms of how you can present your stuff, uh, how you can do that, and there are some best ways to do them, some good practices, some bad practices, some things to avoid. I will get into that. I will get into that in one of the lectures uh, and probably throughout the course as well, to some extent. But uh, again, you have to find your own style and more importantly, you should avoid these low typos, like test tile, it's test title supposed to be, right? And we will get to all of these things. I will show you a few options to choose from, a few tips and pointers as well. Okay, so getting back to the sections, getting back to the sections, I have a section, second section, and I can create a fourth one, a third one rather, okay? Add section, just like that. Again, I can do third section. Third section, very simply, rename. Okay, I have my third section. As you can see, I now right-clicked on that. I right-clicked on, uh, clicked on that. And I can rename the section. I can remove that. I can also remove all sections. It would, nothing would have any sections anymore. I would not suggest going with this option if you do need to remove some of them do try to go at them one by one. Okay, and you can move section up and all that. Uh, you can also collapse and expand. So let's do a little collapse on the first one. Okay, you see it's collapsed now. I can expand it. You see, there are these uh, sort of clickable, expandable options, uh, but you can actually do all that stuff just by clicking one of these shortcuts like that, you see? And in the third section, in the third section, I need to create some little slide. Okay, I'm just gonna do test. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Okay, and you may notice that I just did it through the shortcut, created the slide from the shortcut, and I got the previous, the previous layout template. Okay, so this is important to note. This is what you will get if you take a shortcut. Now I have this first section and let's say I want to move it in front of the second one. So I can do it like that. You see, now it's third and then it's second. All quite simple. So we have a bit of a, a bit of a slideshow that we can show. Now the way you show it, the way you show it, you have this little button on top. Start from the beginning, start from the beginning. So if I click that, if I click that like that, you see, I get my slideshow. Now, mind you, on this computer, I have two screens, okay? I have two screens. So this is what you can see. This is what you do see, which this is what you can see. So I just closed and opened it 
and this is what the end user would see if you do it on a projector, for example, or if you even have two screens, okay? So I can move around, uh, navigate them, and now I'm gonna switch sides, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how I've done it. So I swap it like that, and you see this is my little control center. This is my control center to present these uh, slides. This is an amazing feature, truly amazing feature. It makes your life a lot easier. You can have these uh, pen, lasers, and all that stuff. Uh, so laser pointer simply have this, uh, has this uh, little red dot floating around, okay? So I want to show you the test title, the E letter on the test title, which has hover on it. Uh, and it really does nothing, okay? It just uh, changes the pointer, creates a pointer, gives a little bright light, okay? Now, in terms of the pens, in terms of the pens, you can actually draw with them, like that, you see? I can draw, I can draw, I can draw, I can draw. Okay, something I draw, but the end user, I'm gonna swap it back, you see? To swap it back, you simply go to display settings, and then swap presenter view and slideshow. You do that and it changes. As you can see, it changes. Now I am drawing something, you see? A little arc like that. And you don't actually see any kind of a cursor, anything like that, you see? I can simply draw it, draw it and draw it. And now I have my laser pointer, I can point to different things if I want to. And finally, we have a little highlighter, highlighter, so with that I can highlight stuff. It all comes from the same, same place. I'm gonna swap it back, like that, and you see I have this little highlighter. In the presentation you don't see it moving, you don't see it moving, you just see it highlight, like that. And then you can also erase it. As you can see, we have an eraser, or you can erase all ink on the slide, okay? And then you also have arrow options. So this is what I mentioned before. It is not visible, it is hidden, so you can make it visible if need be. I will erase that, and I can move on to the next slide. As you can see, you move with these little pointers, like that. You can also make the text larger, as you can see, like that. This is the text for the notes, okay? This is the text for the notes, just so you don't get confused with this. I make the notes. The notes are added in the slide. I will get to them a bit more, a bit more in the later lectures. This is very important. Notes are very important. Uh, even if you don't like notes, they will come in handy just so you can have some numbers displayed. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, and then we have uh, some black and black thing. You see, it just kind of hides uh, your stuff if need be. Okay, and then toggle subtitles. We won't get into that as well. So basically, this is how you start it, how you start it up, how you show it up, and you move around with it like that. You can draw on any slide you want. And if you want to exit, you can simply click on this X and you will be back to your slide preparation window. So this is how you get started, which uh, this is how you showcase the whole thing. And in the next lecture, we will take a look at how you can work a bit more with text and we will move on from there. And with that, we will conclude this lecture. Hello, in this lecture we will try to create some text and then modify it. So basically we will learn how to make that text uh, perhaps a little bit more readable, perhaps uh, we will learn how to highlight some important points and interact with the text in many different ways. Okay, so 
basically you can have text in all different forms and shapes and sizes and whatever else is there okay so we can add some test title okay test title and then say test subtitle just like we did in the first lecture okay very simply right so adding the text is simple and making basic changes to it is just as simple okay so let's say i want to highlight this and i want to make it all caps okay so to do that i would no matter what go to home tab home tab right and then i have the font you know the font all that stuff related to the font so i can go here okay and change case you can also see i get this little pop-up and it actually tells me what i will find if i click on this okay so i, I can do sentence case lowercase uppercase capitalize each word toggle case uh, and as you can see as you can see we get a preview we get a preview when you hover on one of these options you get a preview okay now if you want to change a font you can either type it in okay this one has a calibre light i don't want that i want say let's see if i can do a libre body okay and now it's uh, it's a bit more firm right and I can change the size in the same way, make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, or I can use these two things, these two little buttons with chevrons and increase the size or decrease the size. So you can just go up, 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 up and see which one works for you best. Okay, and then we have this uh, little clear all formatting. So this would basically get you to the default one. Nothing truly exciting about the text, it's the same thing you would find in a word. It's the same thing you would find in the Excel as well. Okay, so it's, it's just the gener generic things. You can bolden it like that, make it italic, and you can do some spacing. Okay, very loose spacing, very tight spacing, and you can go into more spacing options if you need that. So that would basically allow you to select uh, select your custom spacing okay you can do normal expanded condensed do expanded couple points maybe okay now you can go actually to the font okay to the font and kind of change it through this little tab although i would recommend it to just do through the home tab through a normal way that way you can actually preview the changes uh, on the go so if i click ok let's see what happens i got my little spacing okay that's it that's it that's all we need to have now the more exciting part perhaps is that uh, direction that alignment and all that stuff uh, so for that you would go to paragraph you would go to paragraph now again we usually do alignments and all that other stuff uh, inside each box so you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't do say for example a couple of lines uh, justified and a couple of lines centered and and then a couple of lines more towards the right and then towards the left you shouldn't do that you should have uh, one of these uh, alignment options for each box and when i say box when i say box the box is this little thing okay the little text box uh, and you can add more of them you can add more of them we will learn about that later in this course we won't get into that okay there's no need to get ahead of ourselves so this is how you would do that and this one i believe is centered i can do it on the right you see now it's on the right i can justify it which will make really no difference right it's, it's not enough text okay and then I can do several columns as well, you see. Now, I would not suggest doing these columns and, and all these other options. Uh, again, when it comes to PowerPoint, you want to work in the boxes. You want to work in these boxes, okay? So if I don't like uh, perhaps uh, 
the column arrangements here only kind of have one column. Perhaps I want to have these into in two columns. I, I'm not going to mess with the text. I'm just going to move these around, you see. I can align them perfectly, do whatever I want. Okay, I have my test title and test subtitle. Kind of like two columns, but not in a columnish kind of a way. So no messiness, uh, no worries about columns breaking, lines escaping and all that other stuff. It's a lot easier and more importantly, it's a lot quicker. Okay, and uh, we also have these listings. I will open a new, a new slide. A new slide. I'm going to delete that. Okay, I'm going to do one TST, two TST. Let's see if I can do some kind of a listing. You see, I go on this numbering, for example, and I add the numbers. It's all very simple. The bullet points as well, and you can expand them and, and find more options. Uh, you see these little bullets, arrow bullets, uh, whatever they call the check marks uh, might be more useful usually, right? So this is quite simple. This is quite simple when it comes to working with text. Uh, there's really nothing to be worried about. You can also highlight the text with this highlighter tool. Okay, so that's one color and you can change change one of these to one of these colors rather. Okay, and then you can change the text color as well, need be. Okay, you can do you need to highlight, you always need to highlight and then you can change the color, right? You can see also that little check mark did change the color. So when it comes to listings, when you change the color on your text, the bullet or whatever it is will also change the color according to the color of that line. Okay, so this is basically all I can show you about the text. Okay, as you can see, it's all quite simple. It's all quite easy to do. Mostly you have to look for easy to read colors. And let's not forget that the, the visual quality, okay, that view quality may not be the best in most audiences. Uh, you might have some sunlight, you, you may not have the brightest of the screens, uh, especially when it comes to projectors, we are never bright. So you do want to have some bit of a contrast. You don't want to, you don't really want to do, like I've done here, a yellow highlight, sort of a yellow background in a way, and then a red color. Because if, if you have some sunlight going on the screen, people may not be able to read it that uh, properly. So black and white, it's the best option. Obviously you want to make it a bit more pretty. So we will get into that uh, in the next lectures. We will explore some options uh, in terms of how we can make it more readable and more understandable. And with that, we will conclude this lecture. Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at the styles and the layouts of your presentation. Okay, the styles and the layouts of the slides. This is quite important in terms of PowerPoint because you do want to present your data in a best in the best layout possible. Okay, you don't want to mash up too much text in one side and then on the other too little text. Uh, and then have your image, who knows where. So picking the right layout is very important. Also picking a little style is a good thing too. Now on my right, you can see we get these design ideas. We get these design ideas. So this can be quite useful, but what you really wanna do, what you really wanna do if you have some text, okay, so let's go do again test title, test title like that. You see, they will kind of regenerate. You see, they will regenerate. If I'm done with that, you see now they offer something new. They offer something new, some new pictures, some new images and, and all that other stuff. 
Also, if you have a logo, if you have to display a logo, you should put it before you choose one of these template styles. You should do that. Okay, I'm not going to show that right now, but you should definitely do that. So let's see, we want to pick one of these. As you can see, it now adds that. And if I create a new slide, you will see I get this design kind of ongoing. You see? I get it ongoing. Now, if I go to the design tab, if I go to the design tab like that, I can get back to the design ideas right here. This is where you find them. Okay. And for this particular slide, I can pick something new, something unique. Okay. So maybe I want a different layout. Maybe I just want this nice little picture like that. You see, I've added something new and they might be able to kind of interact with each other well. But if you pick one theme, you should stick to it. Okay, so let's create another slide, another slide. And as you can see in this case, in this case, we kind of have the same general thing going, right? Nothing too exciting. But in terms of these uh, default templates, you can find some of them right here, again, in the design tab just in the in these themes so you can pick one of them and as you hover on them you can preview them as well uh, say like that and then once you pick one of them you get again these design ideas see i can click on one of them and something truly beautiful truly modern will pop up so my point is that you really don't have to work on designing your presentations these days, PowerPoint does all that for you. So the only thing you have to worry about is how much data you will have in each slide, how you will represent it, how you will talk about it, and which part will go before which part and after which part, and will we interact with each other, or will we do what? Okay, so these are basically the basics of the design. Now, there are some other options. If we go back to home, I can insert a new slide. And as you can see, I have these uh, different, uh, different layouts. Okay, so I get uh, maybe two contents. But as you can also see, my theme, which I previously picked, it adjusted. Okay, it adjusted for all these slides. So again, just stick with these design ideas, just stick with, this, with all these themes. Uh, you've got nothing to lose, but a lot to gain. There's no need to become an artist with PowerPoint, and that's the idea of it, okay? So you just find the design you like, stick to it, find it. What you do have to work, sometimes perhaps, not all the time, in terms of these presentations is with transitions, uh, all that transitional stuff. See how much time each slide might take or whether you want to do it by click or by timing. That's what you have to work on and, and how they look when we are transitioning. And all that stuff we will cover in the upcoming lectures. But as far as the general design is concerned, I really would suggest to just stick to what you have in these defaults. They have been made throughout the years. They have a lot of experience uh, and they are really, really good. So just stick to that. And in the next lectures, again, we will get into transitions, which is very important. And then even later, we will get to the animations, okay? How to move objects around, how to perhaps uh, go from page two to page seven, okay? So we will learn all that stuff, and with that, we will conclude this lecture.
Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at the transitions. This is again something quite simple, something that the PowerPoint uh, for the most part handles for you. However, there are some nuances and there are some terrible, terrible mistakes that you can make. So, let me show you what you can do terribly wrong. Now, I have this little test presentation going here. And what I've added, I've added some effects, some transitions and some sounds on them. And I will explain something about sounds. So let's go into the presentation like that. Let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm in my first one. I'm in my first one. And then I go to the second one. Okay. I have a little curtain going away or whatever it is. And then I go to the next one. And I hear this, these sounds. And you see, each one is a different one. Now, what that does, what that does is it confuses people. You should not do it. You must not do it. Okay? So, adding these uh, different transition effects is bad enough. Adding the sound is simply terrible, okay? Most of the time you probably won't present with the sound, or the sound in the audience will be terrible, the sound, uh, it will be too loud, it will be too low on volume. You should not even try to use it. It's a complete waste of time, and in the best case scenario, it will ruin your presentation. And it might even distract you, not just your viewer. Okay, so let's stay away from these sound effects. And I will show you how to add the effects in general. Okay, so first of all, if I go to the slide 2, as you can see, this one says slide one because the test presentation is more of a title slide. Okay, so this is slide two. If I go on this one and I want to add a transition. Now, this transition will be to this slide. It will go into this slide. Okay, so from first to second. And I'm on the second, so it will be from first to second. Okay. Not from it, but to it. And to add one, I simply go to transitions. And as you can see, I have quite a few options. I can do wipe. I can do reveal. I can do shape, let's say. Okay. So many, many options, right? And this is where you find them. Again, it's quite easy. If you hover on them, you won't see a preview, but if you click on them, as you just have seen, you will see a preview. Okay, now there are some additional options, so it's usually the direction of it. Now, the direction is quite important, especially if you're going to go back and forth, because you see the transitions, they go back and forth. So, it will go one direction forwards and backwards the other direction. Okay, now one other thing to show you, which you shouldn't do is the sound. You see, this is the sound, you have a duration for the sound. You should go with no sound all the time. Okay, all the time, no sound. Again, it's a waste of time, don't even risk it. There's no point in that. Unless, of course, you want to show off to your friends, you might put in a little sound. It may not hurt you then, but other than that, stay away from the sound effects. So, another thing is these transitions. You should stay to the theme, okay? You should have a theme on them. This first slide from the title slide, it might be different, okay? It might be different from the other ones. But as you have seen in my sort of a test presentation, these different effects will distract you and they will make no sense. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We have slide one. We have slide one and we can expand, look for more of these, more of these. Uh, let's try zoom. Mm, seems quite nice, but maybe let's add something a bit more elaborate for this first slide. Just for the first slide, where we kind of want to catch the attention of a person, okay? We don't really know what's gonna happen after that, but let's do, say, prestige. 
Okay, like that. Okay, it looks nice, looks simple, looks decent. Uh, and after that, we don't want to go into any one of these conveyors, origamis. Uh, we are just going to be a distraction, okay? Curtains are fine, but again, moving things around isn't probably the best thing to do. Now, cover and cover might be an interesting option. It does show you clearly that something is changing. In fact, it's changing, right? People will see that clearly, but it does not interfere too much. So let's try to put it on all of these. See, let's see which one is it on cover, right? Was it on cover? Yes, it was on cover. And the final one. The final one, again, it could be different if you want. The final one, so let's say, Let's see which one would be would be better. A final one to end the things, right? Kind of like that. As you can see on the final one, I have this little border. Okay, I have this little border. So we escape with a little zoom. Why not? And on zoom, we have one options. It has in and it has out. Well, perhaps let's stick to the in, right? And we want to remove the applause again. All these sounds we want to remove, definitely we want to remove. You could make them in a way that they kind of make sense, but again, it is a distraction no matter how well they fit in. Okay, so I believe we have our sounds removed. So again, we can run it and test it and see what happens. See, it appears the first one, and then from that, little prestige thing going right and then the next one you see it's quite clear it's quite simple you see that it changes but it doesn't distract you and then to the final one we see clearly that it is indeed the final slide okay so normally in presentations you do want to slide them through on mouse click okay on mouse click in some of the next lectures, I will show you how to do it in perhaps a, a bit of a different way, okay? But for now, mouse click will be fine, okay? There are some advanced ways to do it, but it is good enough for most presentations. What you can also do is do a little timing, okay? So let's see, it will transition, it will advance, say after. You see, I checked this box and I still have on mouse click checked as well. So in this case, it will either advance after some time or we can do it on the mouse click. Let's see if it works. See if it works fine or not. See, we have to wait and you see it did transition. So this is how you add that timing need be. If you need it most of the time, again, you do not need all this stuff. You have your nice transition and you are good to go. You don't want to add that time restriction on yourself. Uh, some people think it will help you fit the presentation in the time allotted. That might be your five minute presentation, your five minute pitch, uh, and you might uh, do it um, to the precise point. but. I would urge you to reconsider that if you are thinking about it because you simply have too much pressure as it is. You have to talk in front of lots of people. There's a lot of pressure. You don't want to add some more of it. Okay. And that is the only thing that it does. And with that, we will conclude this lecture. Hello, in this lecture you will learn how to insert things into your presentation, into your slides. So what insert means, you can insert shapes, you can insert pictures and you can insert a few more things. So let's create a new slide. Let's create a new slide. 
right here like that let's click let's new slide and that's it we have a new slide so to insert anything it's quite obvious you need to go to insert tab like that you see we went to insert tab and as you can also see we have many many options to insert we have pictures we have icons we have shapes uh, we have also 3d models even and then we have some other exciting stuff let's say text box uh, footer and header and then the equations and then even video and audio files now whilst in word and in excel video and audio may not be that exciting in powerpoint it might be useful sometimes now if we go back to the actual slide you can see that we have some of these options in here as well you see like that we have insert video insert pictures online pictures and all that so let's start with a picture and we will do an online one so we don't have to go through the files as you can see you have many options to choose from and if i go to say apple why not okay a little apple let's do let's do three apples and i selected that and now i can insert it just like that and you also you also may notice i have this uh, photo credit okay this photo by a known author is licensed by this and that license okay now once i've inserted this image this picture this photo i get some new design ideas as you can see right here i get some new design ideas but we won't get into them as you can see you can always find them on the right side but the more interesting thing is what you can do with it so in the top in the top you get this new tab once you select your image you click on it you get this new tab called picture format picture format so you can add these uh, styles okay some borders some shadows uh, some frames even okay all these different options you can play around with them now i would suggest staying away from the frames we look old-fashioned we look cheap uh, nothing good comes out of them okay so just maybe do some kind of a uh, little shadow maybe cut the corners uh, do all that stuff so that's the basic styling and then more to the left we have corrections we can do some brightness and make them darker make them brighter and all that then we can change the color add some artistic effects you see most of this stuff is purely automated they give you suggestions uh, it's really easy to use to make something beautiful and as you can see when we hover on any of these uh, features uh, we do give you a preview you don't have to actually click on it and then look at it and then click back again do all that stuff okay so it's all it's all quite simple it's all quite simple and you can reset a picture okay so say i add uh, artistic effect this one now i have this little guy floating around kind of a gray messed up image and i want to reset it click on that i get back to defaults very easy very easy indeed also you have to know how to bring it backwards and forwards which is quite easy to do so let's insert another one quick one let's see what we can do let's do say a bird right a bird let's do this green one insert like that okay so this bird is now on top of my apple i want my apples to be on top of this bird so what i do select this bird bird picture and i can bring it backwards send backwards you see like that send backwards and send to back send to back goes full depth to the back okay and send backwards just kind of goes uh, one step at a time so what that means you might have several files interacting on one of these slides you may want to basically change uh, which one falls on which one so i'm going to just send it to the back 
And now my apples are on top of this bird. I might do it more towards the corner somewhere, right like that. Okay, and it adjusts quite well. Okay, so this is how you do that. And let's create a new slide. Let's create a new slide. Let's see about the shapes. Let's go to insert now and you can insert some shapes. So shapes again, you simply pick them. You simply pick them. Let's say I want a rectangle like that. I can draw it. Okay. And then I get shape format. I get shape format. And again, this is all very, very simple. You just need to know where to find it and you're good to go. So with shapes, you get a new tab called shape format and this is where you can change your shapes style. Okay, in this case, you can basically just do kind of like an outline, the fill and, and these effects, shadows, uh, reflections and all that. So it's all about experimenting, it's all about getting some practice if you really need this stuff. Okay, now let's create another one, let's create another one. There's really not too much to look at, but again, you need to know where this stuff is in case you will need it someday. So as far as the text box is concerned, you simply click on that and then you can draw it somewhere and then you can insert the text. Okay, like that. Very simple. I'm going to delete that just so it doesn't interfere. And then the more important thing is this header and footer header and footer. Now you may think this is more of a word kind of a thing, but it is sometimes useful in Excel or rather in PowerPoint as well. Okay, I'm not going to get into specifics, into the specifics in this lecture, but to do it, simply click on that. And as you can see, you can add date time. As you can see, you have these uh, kind of like presets. So you can add a date and a time. Now it also gives you this little preview. Okay. Kind of like a layout preview. See, it would be on the left, on the left. You can update automatically or you can do a fixed date if you need that. Okay. If you need that. Now we don't need a date or maybe we do. Let's leave it. And you can do a slide number as well that would appear on the right and then a footer if you need that as well which would be in the middle as you can see if i uncheck it it doesn't highlight if i do check it it does highlight let's call it test test footer quite simply like that and there's also an option not to show it on title slide because it is a title slide and that is how you would normally do it Okay, now notes and handouts. Notes and handouts. This is not something we need to look at. I would suggest uh, just to kind of stay away from it. Okay, and uh, just stay on the slide. Stay on the slide. Okay, and I'm going to apply to all. And as you can see, now we have a little date on the left, on the right number. Okay, and then we have the test footer. So it all works quite perfectly. It's all quite simple. You can also find date and time if you need that, but we also get back to the same header and footer kind of a thing. Okay, and again, you do have uh, some of these uh, different options but when it comes to these presentations i rarely would recommend even getting into this uh, whole metadata kind of a thing there are easier ways to do it okay and finally finally let's take a look at the equation equation is a great way to represent your equations your formulas so as you can see we have some templates we have some templates we can choose uh, from them. Okay, let's see if we can do a little kind of a nice uh, thing here. As you can see, I just selected on that and I can now insert new equation. So if I insert new equation, I get this new, once again, a new tab called equation like that. And I can type my equation. So let's say I want A equals 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 and uh, let's say i want a fraction a fraction that actually looks nice okay 
A equals B by C. And as you can see, we also get uh, this kind of uh, formula like font. It all looks beautiful. It all looks quite useful and I can get back to it if I can, can get back to it. And as you can see, we also have these symbols. So symbols are very useful. They are very useful in, in these uh, formulas. Uh, you can see we have Fahrenheit, we have Celsius, uh, we have all these difficult, different rather mathematical symbols, alpha, beta, and all that other stuff. We can have multiplication sign, just like that. C by D, for example. As you can see, it looks a lot better than what you could write in one single simple line. And with that, we will conclude this lecture. Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at the action buttons and at the action. Okay, so first of all we will start with the action and then I'll quickly show you how to insert those action buttons. The main thing here is the action and what we have in this particular slide arrangement is simply the main, the initial slide, the sort of introduction slide. And then we have three more slides. We have slide one, slide two, and slide three. So what an action button does, it allows you to create some kind of an action on the event the button is clicked, on the event that object is clicked, okay? So it's quite simple, really. We go to the first one, and as you can see, I have some of these words, to first, to second, and to third. So, to create any kind of an action, I need to mark my object, select my object, so I'm just going to mark two first, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to action right here in the links in the insert tab. So, in the insert tab, in the links, in the action, I click on the action, and I get this action settings. And as you can see, we have two options for actions. We have mouse click, two events basically. Mouse click and then mouse over. Okay, so these are very important. As you can see, they are the same as far as the actions are concerned, but the events are different. So when you click, you click and mouse over means uh, hovering on top of some some kind of an object in your presentation. Okay, we will only look at the click. It should be easy enough to understand and if you want to play around with it, you might want to try the mouse over as well. Okay, so action on click. We have none by default, of course, but then we have a hyperlink. Okay, hyperlink to. Then we have a run program, for example. Okay, run program. So this one might be sometimes useful, but basically what will happen, you would browse through your files and you would select the executable file of one of your programs in your computer. So again, it's more of a local thing to do. Maybe it's useful, maybe it's not, but just know that it does exist. And then we have some of these unavailable options, that is run macro and object action. We won't get into that, but uh, you would need some other things to be enabled for those to be enabled. Okay, and finally, you can actually play sound. You can actually play sound, but as I have told you before, you should not play with the sound, okay? You should not play it, and you should not play with it in your presentations. It is terribly distracting, and it is terribly useless. Okay, so there's no sound being played on this one. Okay, now let's do hyperlink to. This is really what it is most useful for. We have next slide, but I don't want next slide. I want my slide one. Okay, slide one. So I have many options. I have previous slide, first slide, last slide, last slide viewed, and show, and custom show even. All these different options. And in fact, you can even do a URL. 
if you need that. Okay, so if you have some website or something like that, it would be useful to include that kind of a clickable feature so that people wouldn't have to just uh, copy and paste it all the time. Okay. And then you also have other PowerPoint presentations. So basically you would select this, browse your free or PowerPoint presentations and it would open up. It would just have to be always in the same directory and the same with the files, okay? So let's stick with these slides and let's do, let's do slide. Let's do slide with these three dots. That means you will select a specific one. And as you can see, you have your slide list. Okay, you have your slide list. And it is numbered slide one, as you can see. And then we have slide one, slide one, slide one. Now, if we don't have the title of these slides, we will just be named slide one, slide two, and so on. And since I have my titles on those uh, three slides, it is a bit uh, uh, perhaps messy in terms of these namings. But slide one is slide two, basically. Okay, you have your list as it is properly listed in the in the list right here, okay? So we have slide one, let's select that, let's do okay. And then let's do second one, two second. Again, go to action, hyperlink to slide, and that is slide two, okay. And then to third, to third, action, hyperlink to slide, slide three. Okay, quite simply like that. So we have that, we have that. Now let's include our our little action button. Let's go to the slide three. Let's do something a bit more exciting. So to include that, to insert that, you need to go to the insert tab on which we already are. And that will be in the shapes, in the shapes. Okay, so you have all these different shapes, arrows, uh, triangles, wherever you want. Uh, and then in the bottom, in the bottom, you have these action buttons, okay? You have uh, quite a few of them. They all can be used for, for different uh, purposes, okay? But we're just gonna take a blank one, okay, like that. Just like that. And we will do hyperlink to first slide, okay? Just like that. So again, this may not be very useful as you can simply just do an action on any shape anyways, okay? So now we have that, let's launch a presentation. Let's see what it looks like just quickly. Okay, so I have to first, I can go to first, right? And I can also use some normal navigation. You see slide two, slide three. And now with this one, I'm gonna get to the first one again. Okay, I can go back to third, back to first, go to second, use normal navigation to get to the third again, and back to one. So this is how the actions work. It's quite simple. You just have to remember where to find them. And with that, we will conclude this lecture. Hello, in this lecture we will get started with animations. Okay, so animations can be useful from time to time and they are the best thing on PowerPoint if you really want to showcase your skills or in other words show off, right? So I'm going to give you a little sample, a little example, right? I have this uh, first slide now. It's a two slide uh, presentation. I'm gonna go to the second one. I'm gonna go to the second one and I have this little square it might be, it might be a rectangle, who knows. But if I click on that, you see I'm clicking on the rectangle. I get an arrow, I get an arrow. And the arrow is also clickable. So I can go on that, click on that and see what happens. The rectangle is now spinning. It will spin for a few seconds, okay? And it will stop as you can see. 
So these are the animations. Obviously in this case it's not terribly useful but there are some cases where it might be useful not just for showing off purposes right. So let's exit this and let's see what we can do how we can do it. Okay let's take a look at this example first and then let's do something in addition to that. So we have this arrow we have this arrow right and if I select this arrow and go to the animations, animations tab, I can see that I have fly in animation selected. Okay. But what triggers it is obviously a trigger. It's a trigger and that you can select in the advanced animation. Okay. Section, right. And you expand the triggers. And then you can select on click, on click of what this animation will be triggered. Okay, on click of what, on click of what. And in this case, that would be rectangle three. Rectangle three is this rectangle. Now the names for the shapes uh, can become quite a few confusing at times. So you do have to be quite careful about it. But basically, the idea is when the rectangle is clicked, this animation, this fly-in animation will be triggered. There are more animations, okay, so there are exit ones, entrance ones, and then emphasis, they basically just uh, kind of show off, okay, maybe highlight something, do, do stuff like that, and then we have motion path, so with those, uh, uh, we will get into them in the next lecture, okay. But now it's fly in and something else. Okay, so we have a little entrance and that's how it happens. That's how it happens. See, I have my animation on the object I want to animate and the trigger will be one of the other objects or the object itself. It can also be the trigger. Okay, so with that, with that, I also have duration. Okay, this one is default duration. But for example, if I select my square, my rectangle, I have a different kind of an animation, which is spin, as you have seen. Okay, it's a spin and that would be emphasis, right? Okay, we have that. And then in this case, the trigger is the straight arrow connector five. That's what it's called. And in terms of the duration, you see we have eight seconds, right? Eight seconds. Now there is also a delay. There is also a delay. So if I were to increase the delay for say three seconds, right? Let's do three seconds. I will launch that again, right? I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna hoe here, and I'm gonna get my arrow, I'm gonna click on the arrow. You see, we had to wait three seconds for it to start spinning, start working. I'm going to exit. Okay. And that's that with this particular slide. Now let's go to another one. Let's go to another one. Let's see something a bit more advanced. Okay. So let's do a new slide. Let's do a new slide. Let's delete all this uh, layout stuff. We do not need that. Okay. So let's do a square. A little square again like that let's do a little square and let's do let's do an arrow that will exit okay an arrow that will exit it will exit and let's make it do something else as well okay let's make it do something else as well so let's create the arrow first let's do shapes let's do let's do an arrow Okay, this one should be fine. Let's do the block arrow so that we can clearly see it. All right, a little bigger one like that. So let's go to the animations now. This is for the arrow, for the arrow. Okay, animations and I want some emphasis. What I want to do is for it to spin and then exit. Okay, I want to do that. Spin, spin, spin and then exit and then exit, right? So let's add another option. Let's do let's do a fly out, fly out like that. Let's see, let's get back to let's get back to the spin, 
right now to to add another animation on the same on the same object you need to go through here you see add animation so it will add a second one let's do fly out like that and now let's go to the animation pane where we will be able to see the whole list okay so we have uh, this one on click on click you see on click down so that's uh, down for the name of the arrow and that is spinning so on click it will spin but also on click it will exit which is something we do not want so what happens you select this uh, other animation the exit one and then you go to more options you can do that and then you do either start with previous or start after previous now we want it to spin and then exit so we do it after previous like that and you see it shows you kind of like a timeline in this uh, block representation we have the yellow the spinning and then the exit okay now this should all happen it should all happen on click of something right on click of something let's see if we can do that trigger so now it's split up now it's split up and we can do a little drag and drop okay so you just select the second one like that and you push it to the trigger like that so you see now it works perfectly and the trigger is the one that we do want okay so that's how it should work and let's uh, start it let's see if it does indeed do that okay i'm gonna click on that this one works this is the one we want to see so let's click on the box see spinning spinning and it goes out and as you can see once it goes out it stays out so this is uh, what we have to learn for this lecture and as i mentioned before in the next lecture we will take a look at some different kinds of motions the different kinds of animations and with that we will conclude this lecture Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at some additional presentation types. So in this case I have three slides, the first one just being the main initial introductory slide and then a couple more slides to show you what else you can do with these animations. Okay, so let's run it, let's run it and let's take a look at the little example I have here okay so let's get to the second one now this is basically one of those things where you can select some answers some several answers and put them in the box it won't be drag and drop exactly but on click they will go into this box so let's try and click answer one like that and then let's do answer two you see it goes in nicely into this box now the answer free I left empty we will take a look at how it's done and we will fill that in as well okay so on to the next slide and here we have a little arrow now if I click on this arrow it will move 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 around like that you see and it goes out it does not exit in this case it simply has a sort of a free line movement okay so let's exit the presentation and now we'll show you how it's all done it's quite easy to do okay so this one this one we have this one we have this one and we need the answer free so to do that in a straight line you need to go to animations you need to go to animations and then you need to select 
one of these motion paths animations, okay? So as you can see, we have lines, arcs, turns, shapes, loops, custom paths, uh, and there are even more of them, okay? There are even more of them. So let's do line in this case. In this case, we need line. Okay, it gives you a little preview on how it would look like. But as you can see, we don't want it to going to the bottom, we want it in that box. And as you can see, I just move this uh, around, okay, this kind of a result view, I would call it. I move it around and I place it wherever I want it to move. Okay, see so like that. Okay, we have it quite perfectly. Now we do need to set a trigger. We need to set a trigger right here, as usual, advanced animation section. Okay, so on click of, I do believe that would be text box six. Yes, indeed it is. As you can see, the number changed to uh, this little lightning bolt thing. Okay, so that should work. Let's run it again. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Of course, it is working and it is working quite perfectly. Okay, so let's let's cancel that. Okay. And let's move on to a third one. Again, this is quite easy. You just set it and you move it around. You show, show it where it needs to go. Okay, so on to the first slide. As you can see, this is the motion path I drew. So I will explain how that worked. Okay, so I would select this and then I select custom path. Okay, custom path like that. So we can simply create another little object. Let's see if we can find an arrow like that. Okay, that a blue one, a blue one, right? Okay, so let's do, let's do for example, a little animation and you would go to custom path. And from custom path, you just start drawing kind of like that. You see, you can go any way you want any way you want, let's say it wants to get back to this position like that. Now, as you can see, I released my mouth, my, my mouse rather, I released it, the left button, the left key, I released it, but it's still moving around. So what you need to do is click or press the escape key on your keyboard. Okay, and then it gives you a little preview like that. Okay, it should be good to go. Now we just need to add a trigger. So it would be on click off, arrow, 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 right one, I believe. Yes, that's the one. Okay, and we can add a little bit of a longer duration like that. See, so now let's launch this one, see what happens. Okay, so this one working. Let's do this one. Okay, it moves around, around, and around, and it escapes. Let's click on this one. See, it's a bit slower perhaps, but it does the same thing. So, this is how you do the custom animations. And if you need more of these uh, paths, there are some quite exciting ones actually, you simply go to more motion paths and you get this choice. You see you have uh, you have quite a few of them zigzags spirals springs and all that stuff okay and the same thing you can do with the other ones you can do more entrance effects and as you can see you get a lot more of them than in that uh, main kind of a preview thing okay you have boomerang you have credits uh, whatever you want and of course the same thing applies to the emphasis and to the exit effects and with that we will conclude this lecture Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at the example I have made specifically for this course. Now it is a slideshow, a presentation of a swimming competition. Now mind you, it is a made up swimming competition, so don't expect too many details on it. However, we do have, first of all, 
a little introductory page, okay, a little introductory slide. We have swimming competition, summer 2020. Now if I click anywhere on this page, I can go to the next one and this is where the beauty of this presentation starts. So we will take a look at what you can do with it and then I will explain to you how it's done. Okay, so first of all, we have competition types and general schedule, right? Very simple, very simple. And uh, what you can see is black, black letters on white background, easy to read. Okay, even if the lighting is bad, it's still easy to read. And then we have some lighter colors for the text on a dark background. This is very, very important. You want people to be able to read everything easily, okay? Now, after that, we have these uh, little hyperlinks, okay, hyperlinks. So this is the action, action on text. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I go say to Sunday, okay, to Sunday like that, I see my list of uh, competitions with times and all that. Okay, now the actual types and times uh, really don't matter in this case. What we are looking at is how this whole thing works. So we have freestyle, we have butterfly, we have Sunday, we know what slide it is, okay, what it describes. And then we have two types, a nice little list. Again, easy to read, relatively large font, okay. And it's all black on white. Again, easy to read even if the lighting is bad. So after that, in the bottom, as you can see, we have this little piece of text. It's actually a text box, okay? It says open navigation. Now, if I click on that, you see my navigation opens up. Now I have main schedule, opening ceremony, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, closing ceremony and close navigation. So I can close navigation and then I get my open navigation again. I can click on open navigation and it opens the navigation again. So it works indeed perfectly. Now I can go from this to say closing ceremony. Okay, and then the closing ceremony, I have the same kind of a navigation. Okay, and right here, quite interestingly, we have uh, these nice little icons you might call them okay this is a whole nice little arrangement looks perfect right and uh, i really didn't have to work on it that much okay i didn't have to look for these icons copy them look for different colors that would match nothing like that nothing like that at all it's a simple kind of a list uh, uh, almost the same one that we had uh, in one of those Friday and Saturday and Sunday listings. Uh, okay, this one just has some bit of design applied. And again, the open navigation works the same way. I can go back to say Friday like that. And Friday contains that as well. Now let's get out of this uh, slideshow and let's take a look at how it works. So first of all, the second slide, which is the competition types and general schedule, right? We have butterfly, freestyle and all that. This is just some boring plain text, okay? A boring plain list of text. Now it doesn't have any kind of a bullet point, no numbers, no nothing. It It's a bit more cleaner of a design, perhaps a bit more modern, I might even say. Okay, but the interesting part is this uh, hyperlink thing, okay? So I have this hyperlink and I what, what I did is actually pretty much the same kind of a list as I have with these butterflies and freestyles, okay? I just list some text and then I highlight it and I go to insert and then I go to action and I do my action. As you can see, this one has hyperlink to fourth slide, which is Friday. Very simple, right? Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. And the rest of them are the same. Now let's get to the interesting part, the truly interesting part, which is that navigation. Okay, so it is quite complex. As you can see, I have this uh, open navigation kind of 
under the Saturday and uh, Sunday and all that stuff. Uh, so it doesn't look pretty. But what you need to do, what you need to do whilst you're working on it, you need to put these things somewhere else like that. So now I can clearly see all my objects and I can click on them quite easily. Okay. Very easy to do. Now let's go to the animations. Let's go to the animations. And as you can see, I have quite a few of them, quite a few of them. So animation pane like that. Okay. So first of all, first of all, what I did, what I did, I added, I added the appearing navigation. Okay. Well, rather not navigation, but animation, right? The entrance as it is uh, called here. Okay. So that appearance effect, I added that on all of these closing ceremony, close navigation, main schedule and all that. I added that effect. Then what I did is added a trigger. Okay. On all of them, on all of them at the same time. Okay. And then what I also did, I added an effect, a closing effect, an exit effect, this uh, text box 11. Okay. I added that on the open navigation right here. Okay. So as you can see, this particular object, this text box, open navigation, it has multiple, multiple animations. So we have the exit and the entrance, right? The exit one, goes with with as you can see it's with previous with previous so with all that mashup of entrances okay so once these enter that one closes right and then the closing one as you can see the exit the exit again i marked all of these uh, main schedule opening ceremony closing ceremony all that stuff i marked them right? And I added an additional, additional animation and exit animation wipe. It is called, right? I added that on all of them. And then I added a trigger. I added a trigger. Now I added a trigger in a bit of a different way, not through hair, not through hair, but I selected them, right? You can select them like that. All of them you can select not the bottom one. As you can see, I am failing at this selection it can be quite tricky at times, but I select them and I have this little expansion. So I expand it and then effect options I have. Okay. And then timing. So if I go to timing, okay, I can actually go to the effect options and timing is going to be the same kind of a pop-up window anyways. Okay. But we need to go to timing however strange it may sound. And then you can see we have these triggers. You can expand them, collapse them. You have these triggers, right? So then I did start effect on click off, text box five, close navigation. Again, it's all quite simple once it comes together, but it does take quite a bit of time to actually figure out, to create a sort of a plan, right? A plan how you will completed how you will accomplish it. But other than that, you basically have entrances kind of mashed in a group, a sort of a group, right? And then you have one trigger for all of them, for all those entrances, as well as the exit, one exit, and vice versa, with the closing of navigation, you have the exits on one trigger. And along that goes the entrance of the open navigation text box. Again, quite simple, but it will take some time. It will take some time if you want to do something like that, uh, but it is useful. It is useful not just for the presentation purposes, but if you want to showcase your slideshow, okay, if you want to perhaps put it on your website for people to see, for people to interact with it, this is a lot better than just going from the first slide to the seventh slide, okay? One, two, three, four, who knows where we'll end up. You need some clear navigation for those purposes. So this kind of thing is perfect for it. So. After that, we simply have on each one of these, on each one of these, except for the open navigation and close navigation, we have some simple 
actions like that. You see, this text box has a hyperlink to seven closing ceremony. So that's it basically. That's all we have here. Again, it's quite complicated, it's quite complicated, but other than these actions, I've only used these design ideas that PowerPoint provides, okay? So I didn't really have to think about uh, what colors I will pick uh, and how the layout will end up, especially with these uh, closing ceremonies and opening ceremonies. Uh, those were just design ideas provided by PowerPoint and that does save time as I have mentioned before. It will save you a whole lot of time and it will probably make your presentations a lot prettier when you can make them yourself. So with that said, you have this um, example in the resources. You can play around with it, interact with it and with that we will conclude this lecture.